Okay, so with that background, let's now dive into the feasibility study and we'll start making calculations. Let's say that we know that the work done to date during the feasibility study is that Heathrow has conducted this and submitted a master plan for the construction. And in doing so, they estimated 10 billion pounds for the third runway expansion, design and construction. And this isn't the exact figures at all, but it's close enough and it's a simplification to keep the numbers simple. So this 10 billion, let's assume it's financed with 7 billion of debt, syndicated through a consortium of lenders, and 3 billion of equity provided by Ferrovial, the current owners. Okay, so diving into construction, the construction uses. So we're saying it's three years, and that's for the design fees, for the actual raw materials themselves, for the labor over the construction process, and for project management, and obviously many other things. And then the sources of finance, we're assuming it's a simple debt and equity structure, drawn pro rata financed by 70% debt and 30% equity. Have a think about calculating that. Okay, so applying those percentage splits, we get 600 for equity for the first year, which is 30% of 2,000, and then 30% of 5,000, and then 30% of 3,000, and the reverse for debt. Checking the totals here, we can see that equity is 3,000, and that's 3,000 million, by the way, so 3 billion, and then 7,000 for debt, so 7 billion. Okay, so that's it for construction, and notice that we're not assuming any interest during construction or financing fees in addition to the capex. So usually those would absolutely need to be funded because as we draw down debt to pay the capex, we incur financing fees and interest on that debt, which must absolutely be funded. And if we're preserving our 70% ratio, then we are increasing our total uses, which increases our sources, which increases our uses, and it leads to a circularity. In this case, we're keeping it simple and we're not assuming any interest during construction or financing fees. And just to be clear, this is a gross simplification. It would never normally happen this way because lenders absolutely want to get their interest and the financing fees, of course. Okay, moving on to calculating operations and revenue. So Heathrow is a regulated, privately held asset and it will collect aero and non-aero revenues. So aero, the landing revenues are a regulated price as we've considered with 25 pounds per person and 30 million passengers. So doing that calculation, and then non-aero, the revenues from all the areas that we've discussed, so the retail, the car park, advertising, and baggage handling, let's say it's a billion pounds per annum. So doing that calculation, we end up with something like this. I'm only showing this from year four to year 10, but it goes over the life of the whole concession. And we're also assuming that it's not escalated by each of the regulatory periods, it stays the same. So that's another simplification. Okay, as regards OPEX and CAPEX, we've assumed half a billion in OPEX. So labor, electricity, and all the other sources of overhead and uh, fixed and variable costs. And for CAPEX, we've assumed a steady state 350 million pounds per annum. So these will be the baggage control systems, which might be replaced every 25 years, electrical systems, perhaps every 40 years, stormwater drainage, which would be something like every 80 years, and all the other things that would be replaced more often, let's say every 15 years, for example, the runway lighting, the taxiway lighting, alarm system, ground handling, the stands and terminal maintenance, etc. Okay, so let's turn our attention to debt. So debt is paid down at regular intervals. We're going to assume that the tenor is 20 years. And so with a concession life of 25 years currently, that gives a five year debt tail. So basically the operational period beyond where debt has been paid down will be five years. And that gives lenders comfort because it gives them a buffer if things go wrong with paying back debt during the tenor. They've got an extra five years of concession life in order to get their debt paid back. Okay, so we're going to assume there's fixed annual repayments. For example, if we have 7 billion divided by 20 years, that's 350 million pounds of principal per annum. So this is a very simple type repayment and it's known as fixed principal. We'll also explore the effect of doing an annuity, which is a different style repayment. Okay, moving on, we're assuming interest is paid annually with a fixed interest rate of 5% per annum. So this is not floating in terms of there's a base rate that changes and add that to the margin that the consortium of lenders is charging. No, we're just saying it's 5% all in and it's fixed for the duration of the debt tenor. So doing that calculation, 7 billion pounds times 5%, 350 million for the first year. And you can see that as we go throughout the 
principal repayment stays the same, but the interest amount decreases. Moving on to tax. So we're assuming that tax rate is 17% of taxable income, which it is in the UK. And we're also assuming that depreciation is equal to CapEx, so 350 million pounds per annum. We're not doing any special tax depreciation, which might accelerate the depreciation of the fixed assets. Finally, we're not assuming any tax losses. So 17% of taxable income, we've calculated as such.